Hey folks, and welcome to Carstar's 50th video, 10 killer facts about Batman's 66 Batmobile in the 1966 TV series and movie, Batman. Fact number one. There were four different custom-built Batmobiles created during the three-season run of the show. All of these original four cars were built by George Barris and his group at Barris Custom City with a design based on the 1955 Ford Lincoln Futura concept car. Batmobile number one was built upon the one and only Futura concept car itself and is also the only all-metal bodied car of the four Batmobiles stretching 19 feet long and weighing in at a hefty 5,500 pounds. And you could certainly tell from watching the show or the movie that this was one weighty ride for sure by the way that it sailed around the road like the land yacht that it is. Although it cost Ford around $250,000 to build the Futura concept car originally, they had already finished using it for their own purposes years before Barris purchased the old concept car in late 1965 for a single dollar. And 20th Century Fox came to Barris asking to commission the build of a Batmobile for their new Batman TV show. Barris chose the already somewhat bat-shaped Futura concept car as a base car to build it upon. George and his group made a number of modifications to convert the Futura into a worthy machine to fill the required role of Batman's gadget pack car, and they ended up with something pretty unique to say the least. Fact number two. Batmobiles number one, two, and three were powered by 390 V8 engines, outputting around 330 horsepower to a three-speed automatic transmission. Of course, in the show, the car was portrayed as jet-powered with nuclear fuel, so they never actually show the real engine in the show or film. However, Batmobile No. 4, also known as the Dragster Batmobile, due to its popular exhibitions at drag strips at the time, sports a Holman Moody performance-built 427 V8 with an automatic transmission, and was reportedly capable of a 12-second quarter mile time at 117 miles per hour. So you know it was dishing out some pretty serious power for the time. Fact number 3. There are a number of subtle details that only the original Batmobile No. 1 possess that are done differently on the other three fiberglass body cars that came after. Some of these variations that stand out the most was that the original No. 1 Batmobile's light beacon on the roof was more cone-shaped while the later three cars were more cylinder-shaped versions. No. 1 has a chrome trim canopy while the others have a black finish. The Bat logo hubcaps are flat metal on No. 1 while the others are concave and it's also the only one of the four that had a standard opening hood as opposed to the tilt-up front end style that the later fiberglass cars used. It should also be noted that Batmobile No. 1 was the car used throughout the TV show and the movie as well. Although Batmobiles No. 2, 3, and 4 were created while the show was still running, they were never intended to be used in the show or film, as they were instead built specifically for promotional touring and exhibition events. Fact number 4. Although most people will tell you that the 1966 Batmobile is the original and first Batmobile car, that's not technically the case. Way back in 1943, there was a low-budget weekly Batman series, or a movie serial as they called it back then, that ran for a while featuring the very first live-action car coined as the Batmobile. The quote, Batmobile for this show was just this stock 1939 Cadillac Series 75 convertible that doubled as both Bruce Wayne's daily car and the Batmobile, per se. When he had the convertible top up, it was considered the Batmobile, and when the top was down revealing the occupants, it was Bruce Wayne's car. I'm sure that was plenty enough of a transformation to trick everyone, right? Mmm, yeah. However, I will say that with the exception of the makeshift Batmobile, this short 1943 series is generally more exciting to watch than the 1966 show. I mean, the stunts and the fighting are significantly better, and the whole feel of the show is far less uptight and corny. Even Batman's bat suit looks a bit better and somewhat more convincing than the 1966 version. If you can tolerate the poor video quality, this is quite a cool series to watch through. I will leave the Amazon link in the description where you can purchase this series on DVD if you want to check it out further. So, I suppose we should all be saying that the 1966 Batmobile is the first custom designed and built Batmobile, not really the very first original Batmobile, to be truly correct anyways. Fact number five. Funny enough, in the 1966 show, not only is the Batmobile a registered car with tags and all, but during the three season run of the show, including the 1966 movie, the Batmobile number one actually wore four different sets of license plates. For the whole first season of the show, the Batmobile had a rear license plate reading 2F-3567. Then, starting with season two, suddenly the plates read Bat-1, which stay on until about midway through Season 3, when the London episodes start. Then we see front plates reading ZEF451 for those few episodes, and then back to Bat-1 after. 
And for the 1966 film, which was essentially just a feature-length episode, the license plates change yet again, now reading TP-6597. I guess Batman has an affinity for switching license plates every so often to help keep the cops and thugs thrown off, perhaps? Then again, it's quite an unmistakably recognizable car, so that wouldn't help much. Fact number six. One thing you didn't hear about the original Batmobile number one back in its day of TV fame is that since the base car under all that Batmobile flair was a decade old and already used up experimental concept car from 1955, it was anything but reliable. The mechanical components were not healthy, as the future had been setting out behind Barris's shop for years to King before he even technically owned it. And once it was chosen for the Batmobile base, the whole project was done in a big rush, as the deadline they were given to complete it was only a mere three weeks. This unfortunately left no time for mechanical parts to be restored, so the car was used as is and just ran well enough to putter around the set, but certainly not very quickly. So, for both the cars and the viewers' sake, it's probably a good thing that they sped up and reused footage so often for the show so the car didn't have to go fast or be used for extended periods of time. It was also good that the studio usually dubbed jet engine sound effects over the sputtering engine as well. Fact number seven. The 1966 Batmobile is one of the most replicated cars in history. Most automotive museums that feature TV and movie cars will feature a 66 Batmobile in their collection. One of the more well-known examples resides at the Volo Auto Museum in Volo, Illinois. This example isn't one of the original four Barris Customs Batmobiles built when the show was running. However, it was one built by Barris Customs City later down the road as a direct replica of the original Batmobile number no. one, except with a fiberglass body and a Lincoln Continental chassis. The Lincoln Continental became a popular base chassis for later replicas as the wheelbase matched the original Batmobile number no. one car exactly without any need for modification. They did a great job on it too, and you'd never even know that it was a fiberglass replica of the original and not the real one, as they spared no expense on all the important details to make it look as close to the real number one car as possible. So it's definitely worth checking out. Purchasing a well-done replica of the Batmobile number one like this costs more than 100K today, such as this fine example that sold last year at a Meekum auction for $125,000. And of course, there are always those extreme fans out there for whom a regular replica just isn't enough. Check out this wild fan recreation that is actually powered by a real Boeing T-50 jet engine. And if you thought that was some over-the-top fandom, you haven't seen anything yet. This guy must have put millions into this insanely functional build featuring most of the Batmobile's weapons and gadgets that were portrayed in the TV show, except they are real and working. This thing's got deployable and retracting parachutes, a real and quite effective smoke screen, a real bat saw, real pop-out machine guns, and yes, a real flamethrower that really gets some distance too. I sure hope he's got good insurance. Fact number eight. All four original Barris Custom City created Batmobiles still exist today, and interestingly enough, they are all also privately owned as well. One man by the name of Dave Anderson even owns two of the four original Batmobiles, those being Batmobile number no. one and Batmobile number no. two, which is pretty amazing considering what these cars are worth. Those two cars reside privately in Virginia today. Batmobile number no. three resides in New Jersey and is owned by the Morris family who purchased it for $600,000. And Batmobile number no. four resides in Nevada and is currently owned by Doug Jackson who purchased it for $217,000. So, just bear in mind that in any museum that you visit and see a 1966 Batmobile, that is not one of the original four built during the show's run. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that it wasn't a later built Bears Custom City replica, as they did make several, like the example mentioned earlier. Fact number nine. George Barris maintained ownership of the original Batmobile number no. one during and after the show, all the way up to 2013, when he brought it up for auction at Barrett Jackson's. When this true legend of a TV car pulled up on that stage in Scottsdale, there was practically a mob that came in with it, crowding around the car so much that the auctioneers had to ask everyone to step back so they could even see the bidders trying to bid on it. Batmobile number no. one sold for an incredible $4.62 million, including the buyer's premium, setting an auction record for the highest value TV or movie car ever sold to date. Now that's wild stuff, folks. Fact number 10. And great news for us scale model fans is there are some truly jaw-dropping recreations of the original 66 Batmobile number no. one out there today. If you are a seriously diehard fan and have a spare two grand sitting around to burn, the best of the best model you can get is this insanely true-to-life detailed 1-6 scale model from the brand called Jazz Inc. Dioramas. 
This model is just incredible and also huge. Measuring 37 and a half inches long and weighing just over 30 pounds. Ridiculously big? Yes, but I'm sure there are plenty of dedicated fans of the car out there that would gladly add this to their collection. I just hope those lucky folks have a separate garage dedicated to their models alone if one was to collect model cars this large. Anyways, getting back to the realm of us regular folks that don't have that kind of spare space or coin around, the next best thing is this exquisitely detailed 118 scale diecast from the Hot Wheel Elite series. This model has all the details you could really ask for as all doors open up including the hood and trunk, with everything looking great as one would expect from the Elite series. Although this model is out of retail circulation now, you can still pick them up on eBay for around $200 to $300. The next big step down in price while maintaining all the opening doors feature with a decent level of detail would be this 118 scale diecast model from Jada Toys, currently priced at $62 on Amazon. I will put links in the description to sites where all three of these mentioned models can be purchased for those interested. Well, there you have it folks. Thanks for watching and make sure to hit that subscribe button if you like what you saw here. You guys are all great. See you next time.